Have you figured it out yet? Do you know what the single most important tool you can possibly have when you're working with Rich Chef? You. That's right. You guessed it. You. You don't need a single magical tool. Not one. Magic comes from the universe and yourself to give your work the intention it needs to work. So then, why would we want to use tools at all? Do you have any clue? Do you have any idea? Well, first and foremost, to direct the magic or energy. Secondly, to get yourself in the right frame of mind. A lot of times when we have different tools to use, it will help us to feel more special. Say you're making cookies in the kitchen with your mom or dad. If you have an apron on, maybe one that looks really cool, okay, then it will make you feel more special. Sometimes you have a, a special song you like to listen to when you're doing certain things. It helps you to feel good. Tools will help you to do that. Magical tools will get you in the right frame of mind, no matter which ones you're using. And the third reason why you might want to use tools <laughs> is because it's fun. You can get creative and you can really get things moving and grooving. So that, those are the reasons why you might want to use tools. Witchcraft or magic, which is shaping outcomes using your intention and imagination, is very much like any other skill. You have to do it in order to get better. Like writing or singing or painting or drawing, there are many different kinds of skills and talents which can be developed in order to improve them. Success through magic is the same thing. So then, tools of the craft. Everybody uses tools differently. I know you're not surprised to hear that. How well each of them works depends on your intention and how much power you put into each tool you use. You should know that you should never touch another witch's tools without permission. It's not polite. Each tool usually has its own owner's energy in it. Your bicycle has your, its own energy, in, your energy in it, your iPod or your laptop. You don't want people touching those things. It's not polite and they have your energy in them. They're yours. So touching them without permission might disrupt that energy even if you have absolutely no bad intentions. If someone accidentally does touch your magical tools or put something on your altar that doesn't belong there, don't panic. No harm is done. Just politely to ask, politely ask them to remove the objects from the altar. So let's talk about specific tools now. The anthame, which is a ritual blade, or is in is a knife. Balinor already told you about this one. The point is the point. It's a two-sided blade. It's not used to cut anything in this world. It's only used to direct energy and in, ca in casting circles and creating sacred space. Some witches feel the anthame is a symbol of air and the east because of the sharpness factor. If someone says you're sharp, that means you're smart. And so, some match the anthame with East and the element of air, which is all about knowledge and wisdom. Others match this tool with, a, with South and the element of fire, because most, an, most anthemes are forged in the element of fire. Whichever direction or element you, you, you choose to match your tools with, you should always have a reason for what you do. No matter if most people think one way and you think another way, you should always have a reason for what you do. Your intention, as you should know by now, is what makes all the difference. So let's talk about a sickle or a skype. This one can have a sharpened blade either on the inside or on the outside. It's usually used to cut emotional ties when using it in a spell or ritual. It's very effective for this purpose, not to mention wicked looking. With the sharpened blade on the inside, it can be used as a symbol for goddess because it's moon-shaped. It can also be used to harvest herbs, whether those herbs are used for sacred purposes or not. A sickle can also be used to direct energy, much like an anthame or a wand. So let's talk about wands then. This is another traditional tool of witchcraft. Long ago, when people first started using anything other than their finger as a wand, they usually couldn't afford the expense of steel or metal in order to have an anthame forge. So what they used was what was at hand, which were sticks. The trees are all around you. You've got sticks to use. 
Some witches feel the wand is a symbol of fire and the uh, direction of south because you can burn it. Does that make sense? Others feel that this tool is a symbol of the east and the element of air because wands are made from trees. And a tree's branches reach out into the air and the sky and can be a symbol of reaching for higher wisdom. Since the element of air is a symbol for knowledge and wisdom, that makes sense too. Like anthemates, wands are used to direct energy. Wands can be used for different things depending upon the wood used to make them. The type of energy used can be changed or enhanced by the type of wood used in the wand. Rosewood, for example, helps in healing. The rose itself is associated with west and water, which both and both represent healing. Willow is a tradition is a willow wand is traditional for hand fastings to bring blessings of health, happiness, luck, and love. A witch hazel wand is often used for purification. Which hazel, which is an herb, is an astringent, which means that it makes the tissues contract or tighten up and it cleans stuff up. These are just a few examples of different kinds of wood used for making wands and why you can use different kinds of wood when making a wand. Sometimes people will use roots for wands instead of the branches of the tree. There's all kinds of different things you can use. But you should know that just because you don't know the magical properties of the different kinds of trees doesn't mean that you can't use it. You might not even have any idea at all what kind of tree or branch a stick came from, but you like the feel of it. When people first started using sticks, they discovered for themselves just what worked and what didn't work. You need to remember that even if everyone else uses uh, any kind of tool for one thing and you use it for another thing, that's okay. Our ancestors, the people who lived long ago and didn't have access to the internet or TV or iPods or anything else, no, not even any books, okay, they learned the properties of each kind of wood, rock, grass, crystal, tree, and all kinds of other things by experimenting. What works well for one person doesn't always work well for another person. So experiment. Get out there and see what each tree, which each rock, what each grass type, which each crystal, feel for yourself. What does this feel like to me? Each person is different. We each have a different chemical makeup. And so each different part of the earth is going to feel different to each one of us. When you're out looking for a wand or any other magical tool, be in the frame of mind of you're on a quest. That's right. Dun dun da da dun dun da da dun dun. <clears throat> so be on a quest. Okay. Prepare for finding it as you would for a ritual. Ask God and Goddess for their help. Sure you should. If you take something from nature, leave something of value in return. Always make sure to say thank you. You want to give a gift to the spirit of the tree or the area or the land. It should be something personal. Maybe a crystal for the spirits or a stick of fertilizer for the tree. Maybe a cup of water. Leave something. If you're buying something from a store or online, then the money you're spending is the exchange or price you pay. However, if the universe puts something in your path, be grateful and accept it. If you do find something in your path and you have nothing to give in exchange at that moment, first of all, you can give your thanks. But you don't have to return to the exact same place in order to give something back later. Some witches and traditions have an offering bowl or a place specifically for offerings. But you can use your imagination to figure out how you might give something back. Whether you buy or make your tools, either is okay. Keep in mind the purpose of the tool. Is it pretty and shiny? Is that why you want it? Is it plain and simple? What speaks to you and why? Keep in mind the purpose of the tool. When people talk about elements and about tools, you may often hear them say that they are masculine or they are feminine. For now, I will simply tell you that if someone says a tool is masculine, it means that it directs energy. And if someone says a tool is feminine, that it means it holds energy. Neither is better than the other. They're simply used differently. Is your left shoe better than your right shoe? They both serve different purposes. The same is true with masculine and feminine energy. That does not mean that only a boy can use a, a tool that directs energy 
and only a girl can use a tool that holds energy. Anybody and everybody can use any and every tool. So how about a chalice or a cup? That's used to hold liquid. Water, sometimes sacred wine, sometimes mead. It's a symbol of goddess. Cups are feminine because they hold energy. The material used for the chalice really doesn't matter unless you want it to matter. Then it matters. <laughs> Some witches keep a chalice on their altar filled with liquid. If you're going to do this, then make sure that you refresh the liquid um, every day because it's disrespectful to let, it sit, to let the chalice sit around collecting dust. You should be refreshing it at least once a day. In older times, cups were said to be a symbol of abundance. So an empty cup was not a good thing. Pentacles. A pentacle is a five-sided star with a circle around it. The circle is an important part of the whole and represents the connection between everything. Some say it represents all the elements together. Some say it represents a figure of a human. A pentacle is a symbol of power and the element of earth and is associated or represents or matches the direction of north. Energy comes up from the earth itself into whatever is placed on top of the pentacle. It's used to hold energy instead of directing energy. Cauldrons can be used to make po mix potions in and or to burn things in. Brooms are used to sweep. Most of the time we use them to, to sweep away negativity. Do you know what the difference is between a broom and a besom? Well, maybe you could drop me a note to let me know that you do know. Maybe you could ask someone you know, your mom, your dad, uh, someone in your coven. Maybe you could look it up and send me a note to friendsofrupert at yahoo.com and then I will read your answer on one of our future episodes. So, do you know what the difference is between a broom and a besom? Drop me a note. The next thing, next tool we'll talk about are bells. Ding ding ding. <laughs> Bells are used to break up energy. They're often seen on altars. Some witches ring a bell a certain number of times at the beginning of a ritual, and sometimes at the end, and sometimes both. Bells and rattles can be used to clear up and break, and break up energy. Bells are associated with the element of air and the east because of their sound. Ring -a ding ding. And like uh, Balinor said, a bowline is a white-handled knife used for cutting stuff. In the mundane, which is non-magical items. A book of shadows. This is the most important tool you can have and is probably the least used by most people that I know. You can and should write your spells and rituals in your book of shadows so that you'll know what did and did not work. A book of shadows is, a very, is very important to every witch. It doesn't matter if it's a notebook or three, bind, three ring binder or even if you keep it on your computer. It doesn't matter if it's fancy or if it's plain. If you're doing spells or rituals, you really should keep a book of shadows. Other tools include candles, oils, crystals, incense, bric-a-brac, little wooden boxes, herbs, and many, many other items. Literally anything can be used for magical purposes. The important thing is your intention. The next time you cast a spell, drop me a note. Let me know how it went. I'd really like to know.